During the last few episodes, we've covered everything from gear, from the settings you need to have in your camera, the way that motion plays out in front of it, or even moving the camera through three-dimensional space with motion control. Now let's talk about the epitome of time-lapse. We're going to talk about the Holy Grail. Holy Grails are really when you're dealing with any kind of change in light. Whether you're walking in and out of a building or if you're going from daytime to nighttime, there's things you have to change to keep these settings entirely the same. The sun's gonna be setting here in a little bit and I'm gonna end up doing a time lapse over two hours. If your camera or your lens has a stabilizer, that's the first thing you wanna do is make sure to turn that off. When you're on a tripod, the stabilizer is looking for a different type of motion and it'll cause the image to blur. So in this one, I'm gonna go into the menu. Sony calls it steady shot. Turn that off, and that's going to make sure that each shot is as sharp as possible. The other thing I'm going to do to ensure that each one is the exact same is turn off my autofocus if I'm using an autofocus lens. You want to go ahead and get your focus first, make sure you've got your composition. Once you know that it's in focus, take a picture, you can even zoom in to double check, maybe make sure the horizon and the mountains in this case look sharp, and then turn that autofocus off. Now the first thing I'm going to do because the scene is incredibly dynamic, meaning it's really bright in the sky and the ground is pretty dark, I'm going to use a graduated filter. This is one that's half gray, half clear, so it helps balance that brighter part of the sky to the darker ground for me. Now to take this picture, I, it's going to take about two hours. I looked it up to see pretty much from where the sun is in the sky now to how far it will set below the horizon to get the city lights coming on. If this is a 10 second video, that's going to be 24 frames per second. If you multiply those out, that means I need 240 frames to fill this video. Now, over two hours, how many minutes is that? It's about 120 minutes. So 240 frames, 120 minutes. That means I need to take two pictures per minute. So every 30 seconds is the way I'm going to set the interval up in this. Now, I am using an external device to do so. So it'll still be app-based. I can dial it all in, and then I can pretty much, until the light starts changing, just sit around and uh, enjoy the sunset a little bit. Once that light starts changing though, I have a really tough job to do. Just connecting to the device right off the bat. And there's no motion with this one, so I can skip this first screen. So the most important thing is going to need to know is how long between each shot and how long each picture is. So potentially I could be getting really long because this is gonna get into night. Let's say hypothetically, because I had to take a picture every 30 seconds, I could go up to 20 seconds for my picture, for my exposure. So I'm gonna tell this a really long time of 20 seconds. And then I'm going to tell my interval 30 seconds, what I chose earlier. And now it knows to be able to reset everything and get this camera ready for the next shot. Everything's all set up. It's telling me right on the app that I have two hours for my shot duration, 240 frames. It'll be a 10 second video. So realistically, I did my math right. All I need to do now is hit next. The Holy Grail is one of the harder things to do because you really have to keep an eye on the light or you have to kind of estimate, depending on the software you're using for editing, where exactly that middle point's gonna be between the bright and the dark. We're gonna be using a method where we're actually changing the exposure from shot to shot as that light tapers and then the software we're gonna use is gonna help us keep a smooth transition from day to night. I have a really bright sky, and as that sun sets, it's getting a little darker, but that town below is starting to fill in. So I'm watching on my rear of my screen, and you can see both the meter showing me right now minus 1.3, and I've been keeping that at minus one. So I'm gonna notch that up a little and try to keep that at the exact same number. Now I'm using the ISO to start. If I was to change my aperture, my depth of field may change. If I change the shutter speed, motion in front of the camera might change. So I'm gonna start at the lowest ISO possible. And then as I keep very slowly, incrementally raising that, when I hit my limit, in this camera I don't like to go above 3200 ISO, I might start changing something else that hopefully won't change my shot. In this case, probably my aperture. There's not a lot in the very foreground. And if I go from F16 where I'm at now, let's say to F11 or even F5.6, I'm not gonna start changing that shot. Now keep in mind, we're looking for consistency. So if you started at daytime with filters, you're gonna have to leave them on through night. And if it makes it too dark, then it's a judgment you're gonna have to make ahead of time. If you're using a polarizing filter, 
and the sun goes from one side to the other, you're gonna see that polarization change. So in a long-term time-lapse like the Holy Grail or even a long, let's say, hour beyond, I avoid polarizers. <laughs> If you take from our last episode some motion control and you smather that in with some holy grail, you have something that's going to keep viewers engaged for a long time. But we've walked all the way through time lapses. Now get out and play it yourself. Everything from making your own dinner all the way through a road trip can be a really interesting time lapse. So experiment a bit. Don't be afraid. You're only taking digital shots, you're not spending a ton of money to try it, and you never know what those results are going to yield.